Hi, Muhammad Sabani, right? Hi. That's how you Hi. pronounce your name? In Arabic, Sabani. <laughs> Sab- um, for some reason, I continue oh, to say oh, it wrong. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, hi, nice having you here today. And uh, we've got a lot of people talk about what you've been doing with your stuff, uh, political cartoons and stuff. And uh, before we ha- hit into that part, I would really like to know more about your background first. How did you get there? Like, what is your background and stuff and then? Actually, if I want to talk about that, I should talk about my childhood because I was born in Kuwait in 1979. And at that time, uh, the great cartoonist Naji Al Ali was uh, publishing his cartoon in uh, Al Qabas, a daily uh, Kuwaiti newspaper. And my mother used to use his cartoon as a tool to tell us about Palestine and uh, what's going on in Palestine at that time. And then after the first Gulf War, we moved from as many Palestinian families, we moved from uh, Kuwait to Jordan. Uh, I finished my uh, high school in Jordan, and then I moved to uh, Palestine to start my bachelor degree. At that time, there's not nothing in my mind that I need to be a cartoonist, uh, just um, uh, someone who, who uh, uh, has just finished his uh, high school and he wants to get into a good program to get uh, good work and uh, good career. That's why I've decided to be an uh, interior architect. And I've started in Al Najah University as a student in, uh, uh, in that program, interior architect. And during that time, uh, the second Intifada uh, started in the year of 2000s. And on on the first day of the second Intifada, two of my colleagues were killed by the Israeli soldier. Uh, Jihad Al-Alul and uh, Zakaria Kilani were killed by the Israeli soldier. uh, We were in protest against the, um, the Israeli soldier around Nablus. And that's what provoked a big question in my mind. What exactly I can do to, to, uh, to talk about my people, about uh, what's going on here in Palestine. That's what took me back to my childhood, to the Najil Ali cartoon. And that's why I, uh, when I have decided, I decided to be cartoonist. And uh, that's when I started to do daily cartoon about the situation during the second intifada. I was a student in Anjah University. Uh, I didn't have any chance to publish uh, that works in, in daily newspaper, but I've uh, conducted many uh, exhibition about uh, with my cartoon about the, uh, the situation in, in, in Palestine. And then when I was graduate from Anjah University, and start work as a graphic designer in uh, Arab American University. It's a private university in Palestine and publishing my cartoon uh, without any revenue in daily newspaper in Palestine. Uh, <clears throat> I, keep, I keep publishing my cartoon for free in all of these daily newspaper just because I want to be a cartoonist for more than seven years, actually. Wow. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I got a, a chance to be a daily cartoonist for Al Hayal Al Jadida. Uh, it is a Palestinian newspaper here, and then I get into uh, many exhibition outside Palestine, uh, in United States, the UK, uh, out of countries, and uh, uh, then in in the year of 2013, actually, I was uh, arrested by the Israeli soldier and uh, during uh, uh, my trip from Jordan to Palestine, I was in Jordan for some works and for, for some meeting. And while was I was... Was it about your cartoon? That's why you were arrested? Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. that was uh, because of my cartoon. And when they uh, locked me in a small cell, you, you know, detention centers in, in here in, in uh, what they call it Israel, it's very, very hard that you, you, they locked you in, in very harsh situation without uh, in a small cell, without windows, without uh, any access to the, the rest of the world. Uh, you don't know exactly what's going on outside this cell with a small dim light. Uh, uh, I had nothing at that cell. That's why I've decided, I will, because they want to torture you by this situation, they want to uh, see you. Stop you from what you're doing, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's why I've decided, because they, because I'm here and they want to see me in, inside this small cell, I want something to think about it. And that's why I've decided that I need to, to pretend that I'm here as a cartoonist. 
as a journalist, I want to report and to talk about the situation inside that cell. And that's why I've spent all of my time inside that cell, just thinking about the situation for the Palestinian prisoners and what exactly I want to convey when I uh, will be released from that uh, cell. And what exactly I I want to to talk about the Palestinian prisoners. Uh, And then, yeah, they moved me from the detention center into the uh, Anakab prison. And there I... I've done a lot of cartoons about the Palestinian prisoner and smuggled them from the prison to the uh, my friends outside the prison to be published in uh, my newspaper. Yeah. From inside? From inside the prison, yeah. You know, when, when I was inside the prison, I used to, to draw the cartoon. For example, I want to draw, draw a cartoon, a Palestinian prisoner inside the cell. I draw the Palestinian prisoner inside the cell, but without windows, with bar, without any indication that this is a cell. And when I was uh, released from the prison, I, uh, I have finished all of these artworks and uh, I've done my exhibition. And I call my exhibition cell number 28 because that's cell where I decided that I need to do this exhibition about the Palestinian prisoners. It's inspiring. Yeah, it's, okay. it's hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. I mean, that's that's what I wanted to know because, of, you know, when you just know about that, that person draws something or paints or whatsoever without knowing the story, it's just like, oh, wow, that's nice. Or that's amazing. But when you're telling me that story, that's really, really, really interesting. It's amazing. It's huge. So what? how long did you stay in the prison? Or Just, just six months. But the, yeah, the situation was very hard inside the prison. You know, uh, because you are an artist and uh, you used to travel around the world, do, you, do your exhibition, meet friends, artists, and all of these people who have... All, Even in Palestine, we don't have all art equipment here inside Palestine, but inside the prison, we don't have anything, just the pencil, paper, very, very simple tools. That's why I have done a lot of art. And actually, I have published all of these cartoons in my first book, Palestine in White and Black. Uh, The last chapter in my book was talking about about the the Palestinian prisoner and all of this artwork inside uh, in, in my book. Uh, about the Palestinian prisoners. Uh, I've done them in, inside the prison. Where is that book? I want one. <laughs> uh, my book was published in 2017 in the United States uh, with uh, Just What Book Publisher. And uh, uh, that book uh, also was translated into the uh, Catalani and uh, Spanish language. Uh, also, it was published in, in Spain and the UK also. And actually, I've done just I've done my second book about about my life inside the <laughs> prison. That's really really interesting. Uh, I really would like to get those information aside from the meeting so we can um, have them all on the video. People yeah, can sure. and definitely myself can get some. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I will send. I will send you all of these, all of these uh, artworks. Yeah. So, uh, and it's very interesting that when you were in the prison, you thought about drawing, and I'm sure that they didn't even think about that because otherwise they wouldn't have given you any pencil inside. Yeah. To document <laughs> those moments. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's just really interesting. So, uh, tell me about that. Uh, did you continue to be uh, the interior architect or you just switched yeah actually as a cartoonist i think i cannot rely on on the cartooning uh, to live uh, from the revenue from the cartoon and that's also will will uh, donate your mind and your uh, political situation political opinion if you want to criticize anyone uh, you will be dominated by the, the newspaper and that's why i don't uh, want to to rely on, on that to live uh, uh, from the, the cartoon revenue. And that's why I think I should keep work as an interior architect. And uh, I've just finished my uh, my master degree from achieving uh, scholarship from the UK. I finished my master degree in illustration. And I teach now in, in the same university, Arab American University. I teach the students some uh, sketching uh, uh, for the, the, the interior architect program. That's, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, that, uh, I think when, when you just rely on one side and just you are cartoonist, the newspaper will, will own you, will own your political, uh, especially here in the Arab world, you, they will own you. And, you know, 
the Qatari uh, fund, the Saudi fund, and all of these uh, regional uh, parties. And that, that's why I don't need to to be part from this uh, uh, this game. I want to be uh, free when I want to uh, uh, to talk about Palestine and our political situation. Very true. I mean, you're talking about that they probably will would impose their views on you, so you wouldn't be free to say what you want to say, right? No, no, I, I don't think that anyone who just rely on, on the cartooning can be free with uh, uh, the mentality of our our media here in the Arab world, and actually even in, in, in the world. You know, last uh, last years, that's the, the the New York Times, which be considered as mainstream media, fired uh, Antonio Antenas, one of the most important cartoonists around the world, just because he criticized Israel by by one of his cartoons. And a lot of cartoonists from around the world, Vasco from Portuguese. Uh, even in, inside Israel, when you criticize Israel, you will be accused as anti-Semite or all of this accusation, and maybe you will lose your your uh, job even if you work with mainstream media. Uh, and the situation here in the Arab world, it's more difficult if you criticize, yeah. uh, for example, Saudi Arabia or K Qatari, or you will lose your work, you lose your job. And that's why I don't think that I should rely in in the cartooning. It's very, uh, I think it's it's good to try and uh, or to keep working in in one uh, side as a cartoonist yeah, that you, you will invest all of your time and your your effort to improve your uh, cartoon but at the same time you will lose your ability to criticize um, uh, all of the political parties here in that world yeah okay do you think i mean i believe yes but tell me about the link between you studying the um interior architect and how this helped you draw you know the interior architects or the architect also it is part of from the art it's it's art and uh, if you want to be an interior architect, you have uh, you, you should have a good skill. How uh, sketching, doing perspective, the the, the architect, uh, architectural perspective, and the human perspective, and you should understand exactly the relation between the the human uh, the human bodies and the, the the space, the the areas, the colors, and all of these uh, components which part from our our work as uh, as cartoonist. And that's what I uh, what I think also. That's my my uh, undergrad. Uh, uh, program uh, as interior architect uh, improve my ability to be a cartoonist and it is work together uh, if you want to be a good interior architect you should have a good skill to do some sketching and that's why also when i when i uh, decided that i need to get master degree i got my master degree in illustration it is a big part from the art it's uh, the comics uh, cartoon uh, even the architect uh, uh, or urban sketching it's part from the illustration and that's why uh, uh, i thought that it is it's very good to to have my master degree in something else it's not interior architect it's not cartoon it's something else. Yeah. That's interesting. So when you decided to go for the mask, yeah, go ahead. And and now I have a very maybe crazy uh, br uh, uh, project because uh, I've just finished my my second book and it is comics. It's not cartoon, and it's about my story inside the prison because I want to talk about the Palestinian prisoners, not the Palestinian prisoners inside the Israeli prison, the, inside, the Palestinian prisoners inside and outside the prison, because I think all the Palestinian people, they are inside the prison, even the Palestinian in the diaspora, they are in prison with their nostalgia and where they're uh, missing the, for their country. Uh, I've done my second book with very difficult technique and very, 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 like strange technique. I have finished my second book with printmaking. It's relief printing. I carve each page and then print it as a uh, relief printing. And that's how I did my second book. And then when I finished my second book, I decided that, okay, I, I got a good skill by this technique. I want to uh, do a new project and I will launch this project next month. It is a online gallery exhibition, uh, online exhibition or gallery. I don't know exactly what, what I would call it, but it is for uh, many artworks rely on that technique to, uh, to uh, maybe to bring some, some art for the people or to, uh, 
to bring some some cheap art for the people if they if you want to to uh, like have some art from Muhammad Sabani it's very cheap it's just prints uh, and I will start my uh, my project with hanging all of this artwork in Ramallah streets wow because I I do believe that the people all the people they should the art should be affordable for all the people if you want to own uh, art you should uh, have this opportunity to to have some some art or to collect some art from Muhammad Sabani or another artist that's why i have I've, I've done this this new project and maybe i will start this project with in next month with uh, maybe um, in in Ramallah streets it's look like graffiti it should be wow Oh, I'd really love to see that when it's there. Yeah, I, will, I will send you some of this uh, artwork here. I'll... I so if I ask you about your first piece of art that you've made, do you still have that? Actually, that was while I was six years old. Uh, yeah, I, I won a, a competition in Kuwait. Uh, it was arranged. Uh, it was uh, arranged by the Palestinian, Palestinian Liberation Organization in Kuwait. I was six years old. I uh, I won the first prize at that competition, and I've just I just remember that that competition because Ismail Shamut, one of the, the the most important Palestinian artists, who gave me his he he, he gave me his book as uh, a word uh, as a prize for that uh, competition. Uh, but also I remember that artwork because I draw like uh, olives of tree and uh, the Jerusalem, uh, the uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque at that artwork, but I I don't have it actually. <laughs> uh, oh, that would have been really, really great. Uh, okay, what is, let's say, what is the oldest thing that you have that is a piece of your art that you still have? Do you, do you, can you remember something? I I I am not sure that was, was the oldest one, but I I have one of my artwork that I will I will send you that artwork because during the the second intifada I I used to live in Nablus and you know the um, when they the Israeli soldiers used to break into the Palestinian city uh, like Nablus Ramallah and Jenin all the people they have to be at their homes and because I was a student with my colleague at that home all of my police they were just thinking about their expensive thing, like their mobile, their money, if the yeah. Israeli yeah. will break into their, uh, our home, what exactly, where they will, will hide all of this expensive thing. Uh, I was thinking just about my artworks because, uh, you know, that's the only thing expensive that I have. <laughs> and that's, I, that's big. Yeah, I have, I have some, some of these artworks. I still keep them. I don't, uh, yeah. and I have another artworks that I have smuggled from, from the prison. I, I also, I will show you the, all of these artworks. I'd really love to have them and have people and myself see them. That would be great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so um, going back to saying maybe that um, what you're planning for next, like your next book and then where... Do you see yourself maybe going in the next few years about that part? Like, just think about your career and your life and stuff. Actually, I don't have long term uh, plan for for my life. Uh, for each uh, stage, I I want to just uh, to think crazily you know, what exactly I need I need to do. I need to do something new, and that's why I've done my my last. Uh, uh, online exhibition that's printmaking uh, printmaking uh, exhibition uh, I, I don't know exactly what what my next stage I was thinking maybe I will do my third book uh, comics book about our our life because my second book is uh, it will it will be uh, the first Palestinian comics from Palestine because we don't have Palestinian artists uh, comics artists here in Palestine. Most of the Palestinian artists who have done some comics about Palestine, like uh, Joe Sacco and uh, Seth Tobukman, uh, Ethan, uh, Laila Abdel Razik, all of these artists from from United States, but uh, we have never done comics from Palestine about Palestine. And yeah. that's why I've done my first comics about Palestine. I, I'm not sure that I will do my, my second book, my second comics, but I think we should do that because we should establish new new uh, art in Palestine as comics artists because it's a, 
Um, I've done my my thesis in my master's degree about the comics, and I've, uh, what I have noticed that it is very important comics for the foreign uh, people around the world that if they want to know exactly what's going on in Palestine, it's going to be a great tool for us as a Palestinian. But also, I think the, the printmaking technique and all this stuff, it is, it is something, uh, my passion now, I, I don't know if I will continue with this artwork or, or not. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Uh, well, I love that. I'm glad that we had this great talk, even if it's not. I think it's like we can spend hours talking about what you've done in your life. That's really, yeah. really good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm very old. Yeah. yeah. And, no, I was just about to say at your very young age. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah.